Hey, everybody. Jen Hatmaker here, your host of the For the Love podcast. Welcome to the show. You guys, we are wrapping up our series today for the love of the elephant in the room. I've learned so much. I really did. I, I have learned so much from our guests in this particular series. If you've missed any of it, do yourself a favor and go back and listen. Um, none of these are light and airy and breezy, easy type of conversations, but they're important ones. And we assembled a true cast of all-stars um, to walk us through each and every one of them. So today um, we are tackling a topic that is genuinely familiar to all of us. And if it isn't yet, it will be. And that is, it's death. Um, um, it's either the death of one of our loved ones or dear ones, um, or it is our own impending death. None of us are going to get out of this one alive, right? It's an inevitability. And, um, but what I, what we've noticed, what we were talking about as a team is, it seems we know it's coming and yet death in so many ways catches us unprepared. Um, and in some ways it just always will, because we're never going to be ready to lose the people that we love. So this sort of emotional component, this relational component, there's just a grief inside of that. That's always been true. And it will always be true, but there are some ways that we can be more prepared for what is inevitably coming in a way that will alleviate so much suffering, so much confusion, um, so much chaos, um, and then even possibly so much fighting amongst our loved ones when we're gone and have not given them a clear plan with what to do. So um, all these details that happen when someone dies, they will happen. They have to happen. They're going to happen. So whether we pay attention to them beforehand or not, they're coming. Um, and that is the worst possible time to have to think about what to do, right? Like, um, if you're on this end of it, you've, you've just lost someone and then you're in a whirlwind, like not only trying to let people know what happened and making arrangements and funeral stuff. Um, but then immediately instantly having to figure out to do with your loved one's prized possessions and their home or their wishes. If they did that in advance, how to manage any of their debt, their policies, their insurance, their accounts, like the incredible, like overwhelm of being plunged into that. If it is chaotic, if it is unmanaged and unplanned for is literally its own trauma. Um, so today we're going to talk specifically about that, how to create a plan before you leave this world for the ones who are going to be picking up the pieces. Um, uh, admittedly, this is not like a super fun subject or one that we love to talk about or even really think about, but honestly, it's so necessary. Um, and it does help take out a bit of the sting of death for those that we leave behind. So if you've been in my world for the last essentially year and a half, You've watched me do this work. Um, when I got divorced and my financial advisor started saying, do you have a will? Do you have a medical directives? Do you have a power of attorney? Have you named your beneficiaries? What about, do you have a life insurance policy? I was just like, blink, 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 like so overwhelmed. And the answer was no, 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 no. Um, and they begin to help me understand the value in doing this work in advance. Um, because our guest today, this is one of the most important things she said is, if you die without one, it's not that there isn't a plan. Oh, there's a plan, but it's going to be expensive. It's going to involve difficult court cases and lawyers and locked phones and accounts. And, and it will create so much chaos for your loved ones. Um, so there is a default plan. But how much better for us to decide in advance, this is where my money is going to go. This is, these are all the things you would need to know in the event of my passing. So I've done all this. I've learned all of this. And even today, having walked through this with a lot of my helpers, I took notes because she said a handful of things. I'm like, mm, I haven't done that. 
I need to put that in the, in the bucket and make sure it's handled. So, um, so for this particular conversation, we are getting into the nitty gritty of how to prepare for your future after you have left this world. Okay. I told you this was an elephant in the room series. Um, and so to help us walk us through this as someone who has made it her business, um, to help us prepare for the unexpected, um, even though ultimately it is all expected. Okay. And so we have the very wonderful Abby Schneiderman here with us today. Let me tell you a little bit about Abby before I bring her on. She's the founder of Everplans, an organization that offers tools and resources to plan for the future of yourself and your loved ones. Um, she also breaks it down in her new book, which is called In Case You Get Hit by a Bus, How to Organize Your Life Now for When You're Not Around Later. And it is crystal clear, like step-by-step -step way that takes all the anxiety out of legacy planning. And as she puts it, is actually liberating and deeply satisfying knowing that you're leaving the best parting gift imaginable. Um, she is such a good guide for taking charge of the confusing and sometimes the complicated process of preparing for death and dying. And I am so glad she is here today. Listen, if you felt overwhelmed by this, if you're just like, oh, I don't want to listen because I have so much to do here. I'm so in the weeds on this. I'm a I'm hundred steps behind. I kept telling Abby in, a, in this conversation, this is a mountain. And so when you're down at the base of the mountain and you've not even taken one step up it, it is a it's a haul, right? Just to look up the mountain and go, how am I even going to do this? Here's how I feel after just having this discussion with her. This is doable. You're not alone. First of all, um, there's no shame in this. Okay. Um, it's not too late. You know why you're alive and you're listening to this podcast. So it isn't too late. And we have so many helpers who are like, listen, one thing Abby said, she's like, I've already got all this figured out. I know everything. I know all the steps. I know how to help you. Um, I will, I will hold your hand and I will walk you through it step-by-step. Step. So, um, you don't just have to like swim around in this quagmire of confusion here. Um, I am putting a helper in front of you with resources and tools to help you know where to start. This is doable and it's more than doable. It's important. It is important that we do this so that we don't leave our kids our parents, our siblings, our communities um, in absolute turmoil um, because we failed to put any of our wills and wishes on paper. We can do this. Um, so I am so pleased. Just dial it in here, you guys. I'm so pleased to share my conversation with the smart and the wonderful Abby Schneiderman. Abby, welcome to the For the Love podcast. I am so happy to meet you. I'm really, really glad to know you and know about your work. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. So I've told my listeners a little bit about you. I've kind of high leveled for them who you are and what it is that you do. But I wonder if um, for, for my listeners who are new to you and new to your work, can you sort of give us an overview about who you are? Like, where are you in the world? Who are your people? Um, and just in general, what it is that you do. I'm the co-founder and co-CEO of everplans.com. And I'm also an author of, in case you get hit by a bus, how to organize your life now for yeah. when you're not around later. Um, and I have for the past 20 years lived in New York city, but yeah. just two months ago, moved back to my original hometown, which was Washington DC. And so oh. I'm in DC now with my husband and two little girls and yeah. our dog but my team is in New York City. I have an incredible company that we've built over the past 10 years and looking forward to talking more about everything today. I love this. I find um, your work in the world very unique and specific and important because most of us don't come looking for you in advance. We come looking for your body of work when we are in crisis, when we are trying to manage the loss of someone and their their estate and all that. And so I love what it is you do. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more as we get into it about my experience um, with this particular work and why it's mattered so much to my life. But if you're comfortable with it, I wonder, I'm curious if there was a pivotal moment in your life um, that made you want to help others plan for the future when they aren't here anymore, because this is a specific lane. So what inspired you to work in this space? 
And, and, and I'll, I'll get into that and what we've learned in the past 10 years of building this business. Mm. And, and um, is that everybody has a story. And, mm. but, but here's my story. And so um, about 10 years ago, I was, and, and really how this whole thing came to be, um, I was planning my wedding and I was on all of these online services like the knot.com and Martha Stewart's websites. And mm. I was on there apps and their guides and their calendars and their checklists. And I say this all the time. I don't know why my brain went from marriage to death, but I started mm. to think about life's over. What, what's next in life? And what are the other resources that are out there that are going to guide people through all of the stages of their life? And found that there were plenty of resources for, for wedding planning, plenty of resources for having kids, yeah. plenty of resources for, for buying a home or, or thinking about financial planning or even retirement planning. But after retirement planning, that was it. There were no more uh, modern resources for that, for any other life stages. And I mentioned mm. this idea to my now longtime co-founder, um, Adam Cypher. We're both repeat New York City tech um, tech veteran entrepreneurs mm. and mm -hmm. said, who's helping people deal with death? And he mm. said, well, somebody is, it's the biggest life stage of them all. Not everybody gets married. Not everybody has kids, mm. but everybody has to deal with this, whether it's right. for themselves or for their parents or for friends or relatives. And so we, we just kind of out of curiosity started to get interested in, in, in what was out there and spent about a year looking into it. And after a year of finding nothing, we were absolutely shocked and actually yeah. kind of appalled because mm -hmm. how is it possible that the one life stage that everybody has to go through or deal with in some way, which also happens to be the scariest, the most overwhelming, mm -hmm. the most difficult to deal with, the craziest, had nothing. And mm -hmm. so the original idea for, for our business ever plans and really the book in case you get hit by a bus was to create the first modern consumer brand dealing mm. with what we now call life and legacy planning and and this gets into the story so we we started by writing content we just mm. said let's see is anyone going to even be interested in this yeah and, um, and we wanted to physically change the language of the topic to make it mm. not scary not overwhelming we wanted to make it human um and so we, as a test, we just started writing articles and we put up a, almost like a blog to start yeah. that had articles on like, how do you write a will? Or what do you wear to a funeral? Or how do you name a power of attorney? And we put up the website and sure enough, not only did people start coming to it, but we noticed that we were coming up really highly in Google search for every article that we wrote. Yeah. And and so we were, we were like, okay, this is really interesting. We should keep going. And then a crazy, part of our personal story in the founding of this business and in the writing of the book is that a year after we launched our content platform, I got the phone call that my 51 year old brother was killed in a car accident. Mm -hmm. And he was on his way to lunch with his family at uh, you know middle of the day while they were on vacation when he was hit head on by a 20 year old impaired driver driving down the wrong side of the road. Hmm. And everything changed for us in this yeah. incident. It was an absolute nightmare for hmm. our family. And it's difficult to talk about, but, uh, but it's important to talk about because luckily he had made financial arrangements hmm. and he had life insurance, but we had no idea how to yeah. access his accounts. We had no idea. Yeah. He didn't have a will. We had no idea what accounts he had. Hmm. We had no idea what he would have wanted. And we were put into this terrible position of having to track yeah. things down, figure out what he would have wanted. And it was incredibly stressful, incredibly um, overwhelming and extremely expensive. And yeah. what Adam and I had already been heading down this direction, but what it really made us realize was that we had to go so much further than providing articles and content to people. We had to help them get a plan in place ahead of time. That's right. So that when the time does come, your family has access to everything that they need in one place. Yeah. And, and really that was the, that was the, the start of all of this. And so today mm -hmm. we have this website that helps people to organize and store and share and keep so up the, everything that they need from their wills to their life insurance policies, to their healthcare directives, to their cryptocurrency, to their yeah. recipes that you want to make sure get 
um, not lost in the shuffle to even all the way up to how you want to plan your funeral. Hmm. I, it's so good. This is so important. I started talking about legacy planning to my community last year when I got divorced. So I was married my entire adult life, married for 26 years. And, um, the people who care about me when I was just flailing around flailing, I didn't, I was one of those who didn't know what our bills were. Like, I didn't know how much money I made. I didn't know what, I didn't know what our password to our electric bill online. I knew nothing, um, started coming around me financially and providing scaffolding for me to build a life, um, to get in front of my own train and drive it. And they started asking me questions about legacy planning. What about, do you have a will? What about um, end of life directives? What about who's your power of attorney? And I'm like, no, what the, no, I have no idea. No one, nothing. I have nothing. I have, I, I hope I don't get hit by a bus. Like I have nothing. And so I have systematically walked through this work for the last year. And um, you're, I feel so grateful to have it in hand. That if something happens to me, it is a handoff. It's a one baton pass, a one-stop shop for my people to know what to do. So I think you just very eloquently described why we should do this, um, because the amount of chaos that we leave behind if we don't, and this is, of course, in the wake of everyone's grief, having just lost us, you know, is it's overwhelmingly monumental. I mean, um, the, having to try to piece together that puzzle in the middle of like suffering and confusion, and then it can even create financial chaos for family members and people start fighting. And I mean, I've seen money at the end of life tear apart many families, right? It's terrible. And, yeah. and it doesn't have to be that way. And with just a little bit of, of thinking ahead and, and some advanced planning, you can just, A, first of all, get all your stuff organized now, uh -huh. which becomes super helpful today because we're not just talking about a great point. all of the scary stuff organized, yeah. but we're even, we're even trying to get people thinking about like, do you know the Wi-Fi password? Do, you, yes. do the people who in your yes. life know how to get into your phone if they needed to? Totally. Do, you, do they have the unlock code to your computer? I, I wrote this article a few years ago sort of as a joke, but um, shaming my husband into uh, giving me the five biggest pieces of information that I needed to know. And what I need to know is what is the Wi-Fi password to our apartment? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where does he park our car? Okay. Because I realized that in the middle of, you know, craziness, if I needed to get access, we, we lived at the time we lived in New York City and in New York, um, I took the subway to work every day, but he drove. Yeah. And he had to drive because he worked in New Jersey. Uh -huh. And I realized that I never once, ever once in eight years that we that we had this car, ever once was the person who went to the parking lot to go retrieve the car. So the parking yeah. lot guys have no idea who I am. If I needed to get the, the car in the in the event of an emergency, how would I do that? Who does uh -huh. who's my car insurance through? I I I mean yep. I'm I talk about organization all day long yep. and I didn't know these things. And if oh, I had to get into his computer, what is his password? And yep. if I had to get into his phone, what is the password? And you would think that these little things are shared between people, but they're not. And yeah. then it's those little things that can yep. cause so much stress in the event. It doesn't have to be a death. It could just be in the event of an emergency. Sure. Right. Right. Somebody said, somebody said to us as, as, we were talking we when when we first published the book and he said i don't even want to think about this in case you get hit by a bus i'm thinking about this like i'm on a trip around the world and yeah. something happens back home and i need to give people some information yeah. at my house yeah. and i think that that's exactly right we're just trying to get people to think um about getting into the habit of getting these little things organized we can help you start to think about the bigger stuff too but even yeah. these little things can go such a long way it's so true. And I mean, I can say having done all this, um, it, the peace of mind it affords, not just my people to know, we know what to do if something happens, but me, 
me knowing that I am making my own decisions. I am telling my dollars where to go. I am, I am naming my own beneficiaries. I have, I'm making my own wishes known for how I want to be cared for in the case of a medical emergency. It's such a peace of mind because it, it kind of hovers a little bit like a little black cloud going, everybody's screwed and doomed if something should happen to you and you know it. Um, but it is overwhelming. I, I will just be a voice of the people to say for the majority of us who do not have this all on lock. And I, I would guess this is the majority, like maybe a few more of us have a will. Um, maybe we've got a power of attorney, but the gamut of the thing, uh, it's a rare person that has this really in hand. So if you can help us not feel freaked out, right now. Let's talk about, um, let's just, let's think about the person who's just like, oh damn, I am in a world of hurt here. Where do we start? Like, totally. where do we start? It's a mountain. What are the, what's the first 10 yards? Well, what we say is, the, and, and really the book has an approach that takes people through three levels. And yeah. what we, what we've done is put the most, um, essential things that you need to focus on and the quickest that you can gather in level one. So okay, that like for, for example. So so number one is is critical passwords. And this is what we were just talking about. Yeah. These are the these are the keys to the kingdom. And uh. what we do is explain ways that people can keep them organized and safely shared with people who might need them. And yeah. that that can be uh, password, like we just said, passwords to your phone, passwords to your computer, passwords to your important accounts. And, and that brings me to the second piece, which is just gather some baseline information mm. about critical financial accounts and insurance policies that you might have yes. so that your family even knows where to start sure. and 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 bi billions of dollars every year go mm. in unclaimed funds that people just don't even know about we wow and then lastly is important contacts so everything from doctors to lawyers to employers neighbors um that, that would need to get contacted or that could be contacted um, mm -hmm. in the event of an emergency. And just doing, spend five minutes and put those three things together and you will be so far ahead. <laughs> I mean, I'm living proof that you can just, you can eat this elephant one bite at a time. It's really the only way to do it. And when you're just looking at the whole elephant, you're like, oh, I can't do it. But you really can. And starting with those first touch places um, is this wonderful gateway into some of the more robust planning. I recently replenished my candle inventory at home with my favorite candles in the world from Thistle Farms in my favorite scents, eucalyptus, mint, and lavender, because I want every room in my house to smell like a spa. Um, I have actually been getting candles from Thistle Farms for years, not only because they're beautiful and they smell the best, but also because the company is this incredible nonprofit that provides housing and healing and employment for women survivors of trafficking and exploitation. Uh, women live completely free with custom health care and trauma therapy so that they can focus on healing. While in Thistle Farms program, women learn obviously job and leadership skills by working in the social enterprise, making candles and beautiful body products. And then the money from the sale of the products helps cover the cost of the program while the women build up savings to restart their lives. Isn't that like such a beautiful and powerful model? Plus their products are so, so good. So in addition to candles, they have essential oils, baths and body products, amazing gifts, apparel, accessories, so much more, you guys. So see it all and find out more about their beautiful work at thistlefarms.org. And when you check out, enjoy a special 15% discount by using the code for the love. School can bring it with varying levels of good and not so good times for our kids, you guys. The pandemic shone a spotlight on this, but it is so critical that we are equipping our kids with the educational support they need in every season. Because like even in the best of circumstances, we know it's just not possible for kids to have one-on-one -on -one interactions with their teachers with learning and curriculum customized specifically to them. It's just not a possibility. Um, teachers are really, truly the greatest. You know this, but our public school system just isn't set up this way. So buy juice 
Future School is offering a solution to this. Think of it as extra credit work for your kids to supplement their regular daily school learning. So with Byjuice, students receive personalized attention and a world-class learning experience that's completely online. Byjuice has small group and one-on-one -on -one learning sessions in the categories of math, music, and coding. They're committed to helping students become creators and build skills they'll use for the rest of their lives while sparking a love of learning. It's just wildly important for this next generation. So join millions of parents accelerating their kids' learning today. Right now, Byjuice Future School is offering our listeners their first class free. So go to byjuice.com slash podcast to sign up for your first class absolutely free. So that's B-Y-J-U-S dot com slash podcast. I'd love to hear you talk for a minute around directives and a, a will and, and a trust, all these like options that are in front of us to manage our life's work and um, to manage our insurance policies, our beneficiaries. Um, Cause that's a little bit of a different lift. This is, we now have to take initiative to either create this, I think in the cases of most of us, or at least wrangle it. Um, yeah. And so I'd love to hear you talk about sort of that level of, a, of legacy planning a little? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And and really, so the three levels that we that we really focus on, number one, which we just covered, which is starting yeah. with the stuff that you already have. Then, then we start getting people focusing on the things that you may need or want and how to assemble mm -hmm. those things. And, 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 and then lastly, um, it, the third level is, is, and we can get into that in a bit, but ways that you can add personal touches to truly mm -hmm. make the plan yours. And every task that we cover in um, in the book actually features what we call a plan of attack, which mm -hmm. tells uh, readers exactly how to get that thing done, yes. how long it should take, and an estimate of uh, the cost if yeah. there is any. And and then there's other elements that we scatter throughout each level that we call side missions, where we cover things that may or may not apply to your life. It, for example, if you have young kids or you're caring for aging parents, um, mm -hmm. if you have pets, if you have a small business. And then we have um, we also have uh, break time se sections that cover when you should update your plan and how to mm. have some of these difficult conversations with family members yeah. about planning. But so so level one, which we already just uh, yeah. covered, and um, and at and the other thing that um, that I should mention is that in level one, we also teach people how to do something. Um, that we call a home operating system, which is something to help other people know like how your home even works. Are there any quirks that only you know about? Um, hmm. or, uh, <sighs> in my family, it was like, you know, one, and you don't think about these things, right? Like when you're thinking about hmm. how to make sure other people don't get totally um, screwed, it's not always just about the financial accounts and assets and wills yeah. and life insurance but it's also you know how do you turn on the oven right mm -hmm. if is there some sort of quirk in your particular house that somebody mm -hmm. else would need to know how to turn the oven on um, but back to your question so um level two which is um it, it teaches people how to get a will and power of attorney in place yeah. um how to organize bills and debts um mm -hmm. how to compose what we call a personal medical journal and to learn everything that people need to know about advanced directives, which are the medical directives, um, and also how to bring order to every digital account and service that you use. And we will, um, I will talk all day long about the need for people to invest in password managers. Mm -hmm. If you do one thing after, after listening today, it should be um, to go out and sign up for one of these services. They're not that expensive and they will, they will change your life. Can you talk about it a little bit more, like describe what that means? Sure. Um, well, so uh, a password manager, and there's companies out there. There's a company that I use um, called Dashlane. Um, there's also LastPass. And what they do is they, you essentially create one master password for your password mm -hmm. manager, and then they help you automatically create safe, secure unique passwords for every account that you use their service records and remembers and and mm. uh, each one of those unique uh passwords so that all you have to remember is your one password and so it's just incredible i i don't know how, i wouldn't be able to live my life without my password manager mm. today 
And, and so you are able then to give your people access to that account exactly. when they need it. And it's a one-stop shop really for all the other stuff. Exactly. So then all yeah. you need to do is give people access to your password manager in the event uh-huh. of an emergency, and then they should be able to get access to any of your important accounts that are online or, or offline. So and- I don't know if I'm speaking just for myself here, or if maybe you rub up against this um, objection with the people that you work with, but um, are these services that we can be relatively assured are secure, um, that nobody can have access to any of our passwords or accounts unless they are absolutely greenlit to do so? It, you know, it feels a little scary to to give access to every single important thing that exists to us to a third party. And so I am sure based on just their, the nature of their work, that these are highly secure. Um, and do we have the opportunity to say, this is when somebody gets access to my account and who, and for what reason and when and why, like, how is that secure? Well, actually, that was that that that's the nature of our business at Everplans, which is we help people to organize and upload all of this important information in one place. And then what we do is we allow each person who is completely in control of the data that they put into this platform, they can choose what we call deputies. And the deputies are the people who get access to your information. And you mm-hmm. can pick and choose which deputies you're naming, you can pick and choose which sections of your mm-hmm. information you're granting access mm-hmm. to which deputy. And you can also specify when they should get access. In in our, in our on, on the Everplans platform, you can actually specify that you only want one of your deputies to get access to important information upon your passing away. Mm-hmm. And which is, which is a feature that many of our users asked for. Not that they, th- that they think that they're dying anytime soon, mm-hmm. but they just don't want anybody to get access unless they really, right. really need it. But sure. the, average, um, the average internet user has 130 accounts. <laughs> and each of those- That's gotta accounts, be true for me. Yes, and, and mm-hmm. I'm sure I have like 500, but yeah. each of those accounts requires either an email or a username and a password. That's right. And and according to um, a, a Pew Research Center study that we did, 65% of people say that they keep them in their head. And, <laughs> and so that's just, that's just asking for trouble. Guilty. And so, yes. But I'm telling you, you have to use a password manager because if, 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 uh-huh. if something were to happen, yeah. nobody is going to know how to get into yeah. any of your important things. And yeah. Um, and so it's just it's just really important. And this this gets into a big topic that we cover, which is digital estate planning mm-hmm. and um, and beyond uh, your passwords, unlike your physical possessions, digital assets aren't obvious because um, they're lying around the house and, and can be easily lost or rendered inaccessible if you don't get them organized. And I'm talking about things like hardware and mm-hmm. software. And so this is this is where we get into your phone and your computer, your tablet. Mm-hmm social media accounts, shopping accounts, entertainment accounts, benefits, um, photos, videos. And, and so people are, um, what, what people are doing today is they're making what's called a digital estate plan. And, mm. and we actually cover that from multiple, multiple angles in the book, but I won't ruin the surprise, but we start the book with passwords and we end the book with passwords. So I'm going to, got it. I will, That's I will your deal. repeat myself to You're say, You're banging your drum. If people want to know how to get started, it's passwords. It's, yeah. it's start with passwords. Um, okay. And then, sorry, you had asked, and do you want me to, you want me to just quickly run through things like, um, like what is a will and what is, what is a power of attorney? Yeah, let's do it. Let's let's not get too granular on it. So why don't you just high level? These are just let me give you a little bit of education on what these are and why you need them, um, knowing that all your um, advice and expertise exists to help us figure out how to do that. And there are helpers. There are like the wonderful thing about all this is there are helpers like you to help us learn how, what to do. We're not on our own here. No, we're not. Yeah, and there are many helpers and. Um, there, there are definitely resources available online. Yeah. Um, but if uh, we we always uh, say that if you have any um, ability to, or if you have anything complicated, you should absolutely be talking to a professional and talking to an attorney who can help you. Your your will is basically who is getting your assets, 
And do you need to name guardians for any dependents? And then power of attorney is who should be making financial and legal decisions on your behalf if you can't? And, and then along those lines, advanced directives, medical directives are how you specify who should be making health decisions on your behalf if you can't, and what sort of treatments do you want in the first place? And when boiled down, it's really simple. And you're, you'll find that most of your effort isn't in yeah. creating the paperwork, but just, no, in that's making, right. just in making the decisions. Oh yeah. The paperwork's all there. Yeah. I, I sat down with an attorney and we knocked out all of that in one fell swoop, all of it. And he had it all. It's, he, I said, I told him the same thing that I told my financial planner. I'm like, talk to me like I'm a kindergartner, like <laughs> pretend like I don't know any of this. Cause I don't. And what I've discovered is that um, the, the, the planners and the advisors that are in place are incredibly patient. They're, they're not here to make us feel embarrassed. No one's here to say, shame on you for not having this done sooner. Or why don't you instinctively know what all this means? Nobody behaves that way. They're, this, is their, this is y'all's work. You care about this. And thus, I have found that the people that wrap themselves around this instruction are wildly helpful. And, and it's already in place. He's like, here's your options. One, two, three. Let me explain them. Which one do you want? Check onward. It, I, you don't have to invent it. Um, you just plug yourself into a, a already ready-made system and make your will known. That's really it. It's not that hard. I did it in one hour. Absolutely. And, yes. and, uh, and that's exactly right. It's, it's not that hard. There are a lot of people that can help. Um, and then, and what we really are trying to trying to teach people is that it's not all about financial accounts and assets and and doing things like of course um the paperwork like wills and 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 getting life insurance but it's also about and this is a really critical part of our book but thinking about how to personalize your plan and actually to make 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 it meaningful and how to think about leaving a legacy um, one of the one of the favorite sections in the in the book is recipes, and I actually include my grandmother's cookie recipe that I my that I made with my grandmother that my mother made with me and that I make with my kids. And when I think about my grandmother, I'm not thinking about financial accounts and assets. I'm thinking about making those cookies with her, and I am yeah. so glad that I have that recipe. And more than anything else that she could have left for me. In for me, it's it's you know yeah I guess um, I, it, to me it's it's like a literally a way of smelling what it used to smell like being with her was mm. these you know cinnamon and sugar cookies and um, I had uh, so I included that recipe in the book but that that's those are the types of things we're trying to get people thinking about are there are there are there important photos that um, that are of your ancestors that you know who all these people are that you mm. want to make sure people in future generations know are there special times in your life that you want to make sure um, to document are there letters that you want to write for your yeah. for your family or for your friends that um, could be meaningful are there videos that you want to keep track of mm. um, and so we're trying to get people just thinking of Oh, and then also, do you have any skeletons in your closet that Ooh. you want to? And that is actually a really, a really interesting. Whoa. <laughs> like, wow. Like, what are some things that you've discovered in your work that people are like, in the well, case of my death, right, you yeah. might want to know I'm not your dad. <laughs> yes. So, so like that. Yep. Yeah. There's, there's skeletons yep. like, like confessions or, or yep. information that you want to make sure people, if you want to yeah. make sure that they know or find out at some point that they, that they, that you can let them know, but also things that might be embarrassing. So certain people take medications that they, that they mm. or, or are doing, you know, I don't know what they're doing at home that they don't want other people finding out about. And so what we try to mm. get people thinking about, are there things that if something were to happen to you that, that could be embarrassing to you or that you want to at least let somebody in your life know about so that they can come help you clean it up. That's a really smart thing to say. Like this is maybe something in my past that I would want you to know about from me that you don't find out about through ancestry.com or through somebody who surfaces and tells you the story or whatever. I think that's wonderful. I would never have thought of that. That wouldn't have dawned on me. Um, but again, there's a peace of mind baked into that to know I've literally dot every I and crossed every T there's, 
I've, I've planned it. Like I'm not going to leave a burden in any way that in any way possible to the people that I love. Um, and they can just be free to both grieve, (laughs) um, and also manage my, uh, manage my work and manage my state. Let me ask you this as somebody who is constantly dealing with people who are probably coming to this work ice cold in some ways, like absolutely having done none of it, or maybe just some of it. What do you see as the primary um, ob- objections or what are the pain points here for people um, that either keep them away from the work or keep them from completing it or paralyze them in any one given step? And what would be your, your sort of solution to that? What would, what would, what would you say to somebody like that who feels a little stuck? Well, and, and a lot of times what we hear about are people who are not necessarily even planning right now for themselves, but they want to get their parents planning and mm, they're oh, realizing totally, that, totally. You know, yeah, and, and, and they're realizing that if their parents don't yeah. get theirs in order and get all of this important information together, that they're going to be the ones left with a huge mess. And oh, yeah. but the, but the objection that, that they or the the challenge that they face is they say, how should I talk to my parents about this in the first place? How do I even approach the subject? Because I don't want my parents to think that I think they're dying uh, or I don't want them mm. to think I'm greedy and I'm just looking to mm, totally, you know, find out what am I inheriting or, you know, what's coming to me. And so what, what we say is it's super important to have these conversations and just to, to, you can start to have these conversations in a way that's very practical, that doesn't have to be so so heavy. Um, a tip that we would that we would say is, you know, if you're sitting around the dinner table one night, maybe maybe talk to your parents about something you're trying to put together. Hey, mom and dad, I'm thinking about buying life insurance for the first time. Um, I don't really know much about it. Hey, do you have life insurance? By the way, like, what did you guys get? Just yeah. to start to, the conversation and. What we have found is that people are also afraid to bring up the subject because they think it's it has to be morbid and scary and mm. overwhelming, and it doesn't have to be. And mm. what we what we have found is that once people do start the conversation, it kind of just flows and it becomes this interesting conversation. Absolutely, um, and I think what I've discovered too, because I I've, I have been talking to my parents um, as I've worked through the process. I'm, I'm like, what are you, where are you guys at? I just pulled up. But what I've noticed is the the maybe um, tension or apprehension around starting that conversation goes away pretty quickly. Once you're in it, it's, it's not that it's not as heavy as it seems. And it's actually so useful for me to know what my parents want and what they are planning on doing. And then knowing that I'm not going to leave my kids in a lurch, no matter what, even we're not guaranteed 85 years, you know, I mean, anything can happen like with your brother that he wasn't, he was too soon. And it was an, it was a shocking accident. And we all know that that can happen. And so this is important. Like you're so right that a lot of us are getting our parents on this board, but it's not too soon for any of us. Like if you're a living adult, I'm already working out my kids over 18, some of their stuff. Cause you're an adult. Um, and we're going to have some of your directives on paper and we're going to have, I'm like, you're, you're grown, you're 19. They're like, mom, this feels heavy. I'm like, no, 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 we're all going to have this in place. And so well, that's a big uh, issue. And, and we, that is a big issue because when a lot of people don't realize that when kids go off to college and they're 18, if something were to happen, you know, and they have to go to the emergency room for something they are, if, if they don't have a HIPAA authorization form in place that's uh, right. that allows the doctors to tell the yep. parents what's going on, they won't be able to. And so that's right. it, it's, this isn't about in case, you know, this isn't about something is going to happen to you. It's just about making sure that you're doing a little bit of preparation so that you're not in these really crazy, stressful situations. Exactly. Exactly. It's a new year, beloveds. We made it to 2022. This is a time where some of us may set resolutions or maybe intentions or words for our year. It's a great time to really reflect on where we need to just pull some different levers in our lives. This is why I'm also just so excited to introduce you to the Me Course series. 
which is a series that I have put out with my incredible team. Our mission here is simple. This is inspirational, educational, and actionable content, as I like to say, for the rest of us. It's not heady graduate level work here, okay? But it is what we all need, from finance, to building better habits, to cultivating simplicity in the name of wellness, and more. These are some of the pillars where I personally have seen the most life change in myself and in others. And so with MeCourse, we are telling you what actually does work. And I do it with some friends, friends who are experts in their respective fields, and they talk you through it too. We've really distilled it all down to the best of the best, a true highlight reel of everything you need to know in real life and how to make it work for you without you needing to commit hours upon hours of your time, which you don't have. Here's what you can expect. Four 15-ish minute sessions, and that's it. But also, as you will see, that is enough. We They are packed and condensed without tons of fluff. We also have a whole library of bonus resources to explore and implement and remind you of what you learned. You get it all. Let's start learning together and be here for our lives in this way. So register now at mecourse.org and use the code for the love to save $10 off already discounted prices. This is the best deal. I can't wait. Mecourse.org. Join us. I've got a couple of last minute questions, but um, before we sort of land the plane on our particular conversation, is there just anything else that you would want my listening community to hear from you, from someone who's been a decade deep into this work? You've seen it all. You've heard it all. You've probably experienced it all at this point. You've got clients probably in every demographic and across every single um, range of life stage and experience. Um, and you've racked up a lot of knowledge here. And so if there was just any one last thing that you'd kind of like to say or encourage the people with or make sure that they hear, what would that be? I, I guess I would say just, first of all, just get started. Just don't be scared. Just take some baby steps, get started. Mm -hmm. It will mean a huge amount of difference for you and your family. But, um, but, but also that you should take control and take power of, uh, take control of the plan that you want. And we lay this out in the book. It's a section called avoid the default, because mm -hmm. if you don't do any planning, there is a plan for you. That's Waiting right. For you. It's just not the plan that you created. Yeah, and that is correct. It will involve expensive court proceedings. It'll mm. involve you not getting or your family not getting access to money that they're going to need in a pinch. That's it's gonna, good. It's going to mean a locked phone that you're going to need access to never getting unlocked and so much more. And really our, our book and our, our website so right. is about how to avoid the defaults. And mm. so I would just say, just avoid the default. Just get started. That's it. I love that. That's a, that's actually encouraging because everybody can do one thing. Everybody can just wrangle some passwords and just like that, you've done a step, a big one. Um, okay. Let me, let me ask you this, Abby, because this episode is embedded in a series we're calling the elephant in the room in which we, as a show, we're just, we wanted to get really curious around hard topics that we tend to avoid altogether that we are afraid of or confused about, or there's like shame around it, whatever the thing is um, it's, it's important. And yet we avoid it. And this obviously being one of them. So from that perspective, just in general, not necessarily having to do with just your particular work, but in general, how do you as a human person, as a wife and a mom and a friend and a sister and a daughter, how do you approach uncomfortable positions? Um, whatever it is, whether it's confronting a, a long held belief that should be challenged or sharing difficult news or um, admitting something, whatever the thing is, whatever's the challenge, how do you, cause now you're pretty practiced at it just given your, your work, but how do you approach these things? I was just going to say my whole life, my whole, you know, for the past yeah. decade, my life has been devoted to helping uh, approach a, dip a difficult topic. And yeah. how do you do that? And I guess my approach is in life, whether it's this, you know, this topic or 
or other difficult situations is to approach things head on and mm. to be thoughtful, but to, to, to deal with it. Mm. And I, I mean, I, I am actually terrified of death and dying. I hate the topic death and dying. Mm. I'm afraid of my own mortality. I'm afraid of dying. I don't want to die. I don't want my parents to die. I don't want anybody yeah. to die. I, and, and what I did was start a business and, yeah. and, and a book on helping people to confront it. That's the yeah, way you that did. I'm dealing with it, which is taking control of the thing that feels like it's out mm. of control. Very and, good. and so that, that's how I, I like to approach things is just head on. I love that. Um, one last question here, and I ask all my guests this question, um, that I borrowed from a, a leader that I love and you, please, I would love for you to feel free to answer this. However you would like this can, you can give me a serious and an earnest answer, or it could be something like wackadoo and bananas. Um, this is the question though. What's saving your life right now? Oh, wow. Um, it's something I got into a few years ago. It's this incredible, um, it's this incredible online Pilates uh, class that I mm. take by this amazing person named Melissa Wood. And her mm. her program is called, do you know Melissa Wood? Uh -uh. I do Melissa Wood every single day, mm. whether it's for five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, um, 30 minutes, but it is the thing in my life that grounds me and gets me ready for the day. And I find that when on days where I have not done that, I'm in a terrible mood. I, mm. I can't focus. I'm not myself. But um, so I've really tried to to do this routine every single day. I think mm -hmm. that has actually um, yeah. saved my life over this past crazy years. Of Probably COVID. a combination of the two things, both the actual doing of the Pilates and also the priority that you made it in your own life. That is empowering in and of itself um, to feel like, look at me doing a thing more than three days in a row, um, for right. myself, for my it, mental health. Uh-huh. For my, and I, it, that's exactly right. And it's, for yeah. me, it's more about for, for mental health. Yeah. It, it's a blend of mental health and physical health for sure. Sure, sure. But at the end of every one of, of the segments, she has you, you know, put your hands together and yeah. take a deep breath in. And yeah. to me, that just makes all the difference in my day. That's a great answer. Okay, before I let you off the hook here, can you just tell, you've given us a lot to, this is a lot, it's a lot to think about. Um, it's a lot to consider all at once. The mountain is big when you're standing at the base of it and looking up at it. So will you please remind my listeners where they can find all your things? Cause you will take them by their little hands and you will walk them up the mountain, right? Like they don't have to do this by themselves or even figure it out. You figured it out already. You're just going to show everybody how to do it. So where do they go to get your help? Yes, we have figured this all out for yes. you. And we will we will hold your hand and help yes. you feel like a hero. Yes. Um, you can find uh, us in a variety of places. One is everplans.com where you can sign up and create an account and the website will do a lot of the heavy lifting for you and take you through everything that you need to do. And then the book, in case you get hit by a bus, how to organize your life now for when you're not around later. And it's available anywhere books are sold. You can buy it on Amazon. You can go to Barnes and Noble or local independent bookstore, um, which would be amazing. But it's um, th those would be the, the two best places to start. Fantastic. Thank you for um, deciding to pick up such a challenging baton and really run with it. Um, this is important. We I wish there were more. I wish there were more people helping us consider this and walking us through these such necessary steps, but I'm so glad that you are doing it and that you are putting it on our radar, no matter if we're 23 years old or 41 or 72 or 89, like it, this matters for everybody. Every one of us is going to die and every one of us is going to have somebody die. So this is an all in scenario here. There's no exceptions. And so I'm really grateful that you came on today. Thank you for being an incredible resource. I took some notes. I'm like, Oh, got a couple things. I've not finished. Um, I see thank that you, I've not Jen. finished it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jen, for covering this topic. Yeah. It, it needs to get out there. Yeah, it does. It really does. Okay. I appreciate you so much cheering you thank on. You. Okay. I know that was a lot. 
That's a lot to consider, um, threw a lot at you. I call these upfronts. <laughs> I, when there's like a big thing with a multiple steps and it's going to be parsed out over a, per, a period of time, I call them upfronts and they overwhelm me. Um, I like steps. I hate the upfronts. This is why I used to hate the first day of class in college when we got the whole syllabus, the whole nine yards, the whole arc of the semester. Every single year on the first day of class, I'd be like, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do college. I can't graduate from college. I can't pass any of these classes. Um, so I realize this is a bit of an upfront. So let me be clear. We've got all of this organized for you. If you go over to jenhatmaker.com underneath the podcast tab, we will have this entire episode. So we'll have all the show notes for you. But more importantly, we'll have links to all things Abby Schneiderman. We'll have her socials. We'll have links to her book, to her website. Like she said, just get started. Let's do the first thing. Um, you're not by yourself. It's a step-by-step -step process. And so if that's where you're at, go over there. Let's get started. Um, and I want to let you know this, in my case, this took me a period of a few months. So I didn't, you don't do all this in a weekend. Okay. So just calm down, just calm down. Let's just get started on it. Um, something is better than nothing. And before you know it, if you keep chipping away at this one step at a time, it's all going to be done. And you and everybody who loves you can have peace of mind and you will not fall into the trap of the default plan. All right, you guys, um, this might be a good one to share. Um, and so thank you for watching. If you're over on the YouTube channel, thank you for listening. If you're listening to this in your, in your AirPods, um, and for just being a great listening community, we appreciate everything that we appreciate every download. We appreciate every bit, every review, every rating, every single time you share one of our episodes with the people that you, um, think should hear it. That means so much to us. So if you're in one of those seats right now, where you're like, I really want my parents to do this. It's time for my parents to be managing their legacy planning. And I don't know how to bring it up. Send them this episode. Okay. I'll do the heavy lifting for you. Um, all right, you guys, um, new series next week. You will not want to miss it. And in the meantime, if you've missed any episodes in the elephant in the room series, go back and pick them up because we, um, we really dialed it in some of these important and hard conversations. Guys, we love you so much. See you next week.